welcome to my video or welcome back if you're a returning subscriber. Thank you by the way. Today I'm going to be covering the case of Kalisa Williams. The case I'm covering today is actually a really recent case and only happened about two or three years ago during Covid. Just about to get into the case but just the usual don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and if you can share I really appreciate it every single time and being a small channel it honestly means the world it's so nice to see. Kalisa Williams was born on the 22nd of July 2004 in Atlanta Georgia. Kalisa grew up to be really vibrant really confident and she had a lot of friends and she also gained the nickname Pinky. I'm not too sure what her childhood was like or what took place in her childhood but she seemed to be really full of life so I'm guessing it was nice. She was a typical teenager. When the pandemic hit she said as long as she had her phone, Netflix and Wi-Fi she was chilling and her stepdad was like encouraging her to go out and have fun but she was a complete homebody. She would always reply as long as she's got Netflix and Wi-Fi she's fine leave her and I completely understand that. Kalisa was very active on TikTok. She loved to dance, she loved to make videos, she'd make them all around the house with sometimes people in it, sometimes just on her own. It just made her happy creating that type of content. On December 26th, so Boxing Day, Kalisa was invited to an all girls party at an Airbnb and it was also a chaperone party so there was going to be an adult attending at all times. Someone would pick her up and drop her off so she was never like in between locations. It was like this because Kalisa was only a minor, she was only 16. It's more reassuring to her parents to let her go if there's an adult at all times which makes sense. Understandably, Kalisa's stepfather and mother were quite cautious so they carried out some safety precautions like speaking to the mother of the girl who's hosting the party like the woman who was going to be there the whole time. I assured her and said like it's going to be fine I'm there like they're not going to get up to anything and plus it's in an Airbnb so it's quite a controlled environment and plus Kalisa had been to one of these parties before and when she did like everything went fine she could be trusted. An Airbnb with a couple of more friends from school and the mother. They'd have done this once before so we was a little comfortable of letting her go the second time and we spoke to the mother and she said she was going to be there. And like I said before, the stepfather was so encouraging of Kalisa to just go outside and have fun and be social. It had just been the back of the pandemic or in the middle of the pandemic and he's like, go be young, go have fun. So she went. But what they didn't know was the location of the party had changed and it wasn't going to be in an Airbnb anymore. It was going to be in a hotel room in downtown Atlanta. The hotel, which the party was going to be hosted at now, was the Hyatt Regency. The parent who was like chaperoning him had paid for this room. Allegedly, there was trouble booking the Airbnb, so they decided to change it to the hotel room. But there's actually not a known reason why there was a sudden change, but they didn't keep Kalisa's parents in the loop. So they thought she was going to an Airbnb, but she was actually in downtown Atlanta in a hotel room. However, this change was going to be fatal for 16 year old Kalisa. For a really quick second, I just wanna talk about Atlanta and downtown Atlanta because you may not know. Okay, so in the daytime, it's meant to be lovely. You can go and sightsee and stuff. However, nighttime isn't quite as pleasant and you're urged to watch where you're going because there's some things lurking in the dark. Downtown Atlanta's crime rate is 188% higher than the national average. 188%, not even just 100%, like 188, almost 200% higher than the na national average, which is insane. So back to the night of December the 26th. Kalisa had got herself ready for this party. She was looking pretty, feeling herself, and she headed off. And in her parents' size, she was on the way to the Airbnb, but by the time they found out the truth, it was going to be too late. A quick disclaimer, some of the next things that I'm going to say I've actually only read on one source, but they seem to make sense, so I thought I'd put them in anyway, but just bear that in mind that only one source has said this. So around 8 or 9pm, Kalisa arrived at the hotel room, and she was actually the first one there, so she called her mum to tell her, like, no one else has turned up yet, 
and her mum just replied like give it some time they will so, but i believe some of the girls showed up shortly after and they were having a really good time originally it was meant to be an all girls party but allegedly two boys showed up as well but then two minutes past midnight at 12.02 Kalisa started filming her very last tiktok the tiktok that would help piece together her own murder in this tiktok you can see Kalisa dancing and she's doing her thing and then all of a sudden she jumps up and she looks startled she looks like someone scared her and then she like heads towards the camera to turn it off some people think that someone had burst into the room at this point and scared her because she wasn't expecting it or some people believe that someone pulled a gun on her and 20 minutes after filming that tiktok Kalisa was pronounced dead at 12.23. Other residents in the hotel room heard gunshots and then two party goers took Kalisa's body down to the lobby to call for help. Police were quickly rushed to the scene and they checked Kalisa for a pulse but there was none. They immediately rushed her to hospital in an attempt to save her life. The hospital staff were working tirelessly to try and save Kalisa but they were unsuccessful and she passed away. Poor Kalisa's parents were thinking that their daughter was having fun at an airbnb party but little did they know that Kalisa was dead in hospital at some point in the night Kalisa's mother actually called the chaperone to make sure that everything was okay and Kalisa was having a good time but the chaperone actually failed to mention what had happened and that's probably because she wasn't even there she told all the parents that she was going to be there all night but in fact she didn't even go into the hotel room heartbreakingly Kalisa's mother didn't even find out about her own daughter's death until eight hours later and the way she found out was just heartbreaking like this is the morgue and i was like the morgue they was like yes ma'am they was like well we're waiting on your daughter body to come through i'm like whoa the call she received would send your mind spiraling and you would have so many questions and to be honest you'd probably think it's the wrong number no mother should have to find out about her own daughter's death like that as you can imagine Kalisa's mother had 101 questions and she wanted to find out exactly what happened that night and police told her their version of events so based on like evidence and witness statements as i mentioned earlier that there was two males in the room as well and it's believed that Kalisa known them they were like an acquaintance they believed that an argument between Kalisa and one of the males had broke out maybe after the tiktok and then he fatally shot her in the groin. Just remember as well, there was only a 20 minute time scale between after the TikTok and Kalisa being pronounced dead. So the argument and the shooting would have happened within those 20 minutes. As the boy was only 16 years of age, his identity was never released to the public. So we actually never find out his name. The 16 year old boy was quickly identified by police and they arrested him. And this is where he admitted to there being an argument and then him shooting her. The 16 year old boy got charged with felony murder, aggravated assault, possession of a gun on a minor and sexual assault. They only read the sexual assault on one source and they went on to say that he attempted to rape her. When she declined, he shot her in the groin, but only one source said that, so allegedly, I don't know. And because of all these charges, he got sent to the Metro Youth Detention Centre as because he was under 18, he wasn't eligible to go to jail. Kalisa's family to this day are still searching for answers for what happened in those 20 minutes. She has questions like, who was there? Who was in that hotel room at the time? Why did he shoot? And also she hasn't seen any CCTV footage from the Hyatt Hotel of that night. And Kalisa's mother feels a lot of anger towards the woman who said she was going to be there that night because she wasn't. And maybe knowing that she wasn't going to be there, Kalisa's mother wouldn't have sent her daughter. It's just misleading and it's manipulating Kalisa's mother's trust. She had trust in that woman to be there and she wasn't and look what happened. Personally, researching this case, there wasn't a lot of information and we probably know as much as the family do now. I have so many unanswered questions. Like how long was the boy sentenced for? I couldn't find anywhere how long he got sentenced for. I want to know who was in that hotel room that night and why haven't they got any CCTV footage? I want to know why did he kill her and what made her jump in that TikTok video? But unfortunately, all that I've said is all the information that I have on this case. Let me know what you think below. And honestly, my heart goes out to her family. She was only 16 years old. That's so young. I do just want to give the disclaimer because I completely forgot to say it at the start. All the information I found on the internet. I do believe it all to be true, but it is the internet. So 
yeah but yeah thank you so so much for watching my videos and thank you for those that are staying with me throughout all my cases i really appreciate it and also i really appreciate if you're new thank you for clicking on this video also really quick to the people that have suggested cases for me to cover i have about eight or nine suggested cases that i need to do but there's also cases like this where i really want to cover them as well so i will get to them i promise but it's just taking some time and yeah enjoy the rest of your day thank you so much for watching Bye.